Good evening. I'm a driving teacher. We're going to talk about a route that I take students on. It's uh, foggy outside, so it's a little bit more challenging for all of us, particularly beginning drivers. So the first thing I would do is uh, turn up the defroster. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that up some. The route I'm on will be through some rural areas. Uh, there'll be some surprises along the way. I hope you enjoy this, and if you do in the end, uh, subscribe and give it a like. So always look left and right, and you wanna go into the nearest lane. We know if we turn on the high beams, you really can't see because the high beams reflect the fog particles. I try to get my students immediately into a nice smooth routine, whether that's good speed control, good lane positioning, whatever they're good at. I try to build on that. I teach segment one and two. I do teach adults also. I prefer teaching the class and driving students because you build a relationship with your students and it's very fulfilling in the end to see them pass their knowledge test, pass their driving test. You can definitely see we're in a wooded area, so expect deer to pop out. Vision is limited. And a lot of beginners and middle age and olders do struggle with uh, lane positioning. It's definitely hard to see. Every two years, instructors have to take a full physical. This, this is including uh, test, testing your eyes, your blood sugar, uh, comprehension. So it's pretty extensive. So I definitely agree because you're driving uh, people who don't know how to drive. So this truck is gonna cut off everyone. So I'm not gonna close the door. I'm gonna let them in. Let's see if they use a blinker. That's one of the most common things that you don't see is a blinker. I'm not a Karen or a Ken, but if I was, I could easily flash my lights, custom out. It's just not worth it. This is more common behavior today Really short with the blinker for a big truck, not good. You can roll that thing over, so I give him a fail or her. That's just not good driving. If I have a big truck like that, then I wouldn't do that. Here's another teachable point. This person is riding behind me with their brights on. So I'm just gonna maintain the legal speed and I can flip this and then I have a shade. So that's nice. This is the OG, it's a old school Impala, which is awesome. It's really comfortable. The students really like this vehicle. The brakes are really soft. The accelerator is a little touchy. So if you hit that gas pedal really hard, you're gonna fly. And the nice bench seats are very comfortable. The shifter is on the column you know, to put it in drive, reverse, one, two, three. So a lot of the students have a difficult time with this and this actually has a key. So a lot of people uh, struggle. Uh, you might be able to see it better. A lot of people struggle putting the key in because most cars today have a push to start. So it's always nice to see students and you show them, hey, here's the key. And then they get in and drive. When you're connected with, with an instructor, it's really important that you listen to them, you trust them. I have a really good sense of humor. Um, I share some personal stories and we use a lot of interactive games in class that focus on preparing for the test. I'm looking left and right and I'm just taking my time. When it's dark, foggy, rainy like this, people, 
they don't have common sense. Either they drive very fast and reckless or they're driving very slow. It's, it's not um, in the middle. So I try to teach my students to keep space, take their time. I call it have good speed, have good space, and a smile. So why curb, there's tailgating. I never want to tailgate another driver and I try to model that. The number one reason why people speed is because they're late. I have class starting at 6.30, it's 5.40, so I left them plenty of time. And I'm just looking ahead, looking for lights on the ground, such as those brake lights. And I do have above 20-20 vision. But I often wonder, and, and one day when I get older, my vision will go, hearing will go, just like everyone else's. But I often wonder, why are people tailgating? Why are people so aggressive? Just relax, chill, and cruise. I'm reading brake lights, so now I'm gonna squeeze. And you can see me squeezing more. The population in the United States is definitely getting older. And that's an opportunity as well as a challenge. So you're gonna have older drivers on the road who maybe could have limited sight, limited mobility, um, maybe stuck in their ways. Hey, I'm, I'm 85, I'm, I'm gonna drive, you know, 20 and a 50. Or I'm, I'm 65. I'm going to drive 85 in a 70 mile per hour zone. So I try to teach my students to be humble, listen, look at the type of car that the person has, look at the type of person, male, female, young, old. Is it a example Hellcat? Uh, is it a Mustang? Is it um, a mom van? Um, is it a dad truck? <laughs> so that will help you kind of uh, adjust your speed and position. And a lot of times this car is tailgating and I try to keep a lot of space so I can make good decisions so, because if I slam my brakes, I'm going to get rear-ended. So we're coming up to our first surprise. Roundabouts are becoming more common here in the United States and I'm definitely here in North America. So I'm coming up, I have to take my time and yield. So I look left, I'm checking that vehicle. It would be helpful if they would have had a blinker on. And then I go through. You have to use blinkers. Other dangers out here, they're deer. Uh, they're really dark spots because in certain areas of where I am in North America, there's just not uh, street lights. I try to teach my students, look for consistencies in speed, consistencies in using the blinker, consistencies in lane positioning. That will help you make a good decision. Just adjusted my driver's side mirror a little bit better. The number one reason why people speed is because they're late. Both of these lanes go straight through. I like to be in the inside lane. If I'm in the inside lane, I can go straight or go left. So I have to come up and yield. And then when it's clear or gap, then I proceed. So we're going straight through. We do not need a blinker. If I was going to the right, I use a blinker. If I was going to the left, I use a blinker. 
So I'm gonna go up and yield. And then I proceed through. They're on the curb, that would be a minus. You wanna keep your windshield as clear as possible. What I find, one of the biggest, most challenging things is driving at night for the first night drive for students. They're very overwhelmed all over the road. I almost had a student crash here and hit this curb. Also beginning drivers, they drive under the limit. The speed limit here is 50. They end up driving 40, 35, 30. And what this does, this triggers a lot of negative energy and as many of you would say a Karen or a Ken. So a lot of drivers tailgate us and not being patient, not understanding that I have a young adult who's 19, who's 20, who's 24, and this is their first real experience. So I try to give them that positive reinforcement. You can tell by the sound of the car, it's a really nice, smooth drive. I'm not going super fast, nor am I going slow. Being consistent. 